Hello whistlers everywhere. So today we are going to move on from looking at the notes in the lower register and we're going to go and tackle the notes in the upper register. So just uh, a few words before we do that. Um, not all the notes in the upper register fit on the five lines of the stave. So what we have to do to compensate is to draw in what we call ledger lines. Um, so if you can get used to the idea, what we're doing with these ledger lines, we're increasing the stave so that it's increasing the range of the notes. Um, so when we get up, uh, up to sort of high A, B, C and C sharp, and even up to high D, we start introducing the concepts of what we call ledger lines. I'll explain a little bit more about those when we get there. And... Um, how to identify them but it's really not that difficult once you get used to them so we're going to start with middle d so middle d try and get used to as i said lifting that finger off for the middle d um, it's called middle d rather than high d because we've got another d all the way up the top so i like to call this one the middle d okay so middle d sits on the fourth line of the treble clef Then we move up to E. So E is the same fingering as the lower E, but we just blow a little bit harder, or in reality what we're doing is we're increasing the speed of the air to get the higher note. Okay, then we go up to F sharp, same thing, same fingering, but F sharp um, is on the top line of the stave okay so uh, E is on the very bottom the low E and high F sharp is on the very top line of the stave then we go to G now G sits on the top of the stave so F sharp the line goes through it G sits above above the top line of the stave. I like to imagine it's a gate and I call it G on the gate. So bottom D, I call D on the doorstep. High G, I call it G on the gate. So if you imagine it's like the stave is like a gate with a line through it, uh, the G sits on top. So G on the gate. Okay, so now we're reaching A, and again it's the same fingering as low A, but we're increasing the airspeed to get the higher note. Now A is where we introduce the concept of the ledger line. So if you imagine we're extending the stave up by another line, so we've got the note which goes uh, above the, the stave, and then we've got a line through it, and that's the note A. Then we have the note B. So the note B, again, same fingering as low B, but we're increasing the air pressure, the air speed to get the higher B. So B sits on top of the ledger line that goes through the middle of the note A. Okay, and then we have the note C sharp, high C sharp. So again, we're introducing another ledger line. So C sharp will have a ledger line, the note with a ledger line through it, and that is high C sharp. And for all those uh, of you who may want to put earplugs in because this note is quite high and quite shrill, we have the highest note, the note D. We can go higher, but it's not advised. Um, it's not good for your hearing and it's probably not good for your pets either. So high D, uh, you can either use a two fingered high D or you can just use the same D as the middle D but just blow a little bit harder. Uh, I tend to use this one. Sometimes I use this one depending on the whistle, but on the Lear whistle, this one works nicely. 
Okay, so we have one note which we've not done, which is the C natural. Uh, so the fingering of C natural, again, like the lower edge to fit C natural, it may be just the two fingers. Or you may need to do this. Or even add this finger. So I find that this fingering works nicely, but as a passing note, you can do a C natural just with the two fingers. If I'm playing it in an air or something and I need to get my tuning pretty bang on, then I may revert to this one. Okay, so high C natural in the upper register is a different fingering. So C natural will give you a D if you blow harder in the upper register. So we have to do a different fingering for C natural. And what works nicely on this Lear whistle is this fingering. So C natural is this fingering. And basically the C natural is the same as the C sharp, but it depends on the key signature. If you have the two sharps in the key signature, and we'll get onto key signatures uh, in a little bit, don't worry about that. But if you see the treble clef with the two sharp symbols, F sharp and C sharp, then unless told otherwise, you'll be playing high C sharp, which is the same as low. Everything off but just again increasing the airspeed. So for C natural, if it's not written in the key signature, yeah, then you will play C natural like that, which is what seems to work on my whistle. You may have to experiment a little bit with your own whistle um, because not all whistles are the same, unfortunately. Um, so C natural is, um, going to be played if you've got, say in the key of G, where you've only got one sharp, which is an F sharp, then you will play C sharp as a C natural, or if you've got a natural sign next to the C and you're in the key of D, then it's instructing you to play a C natural. So C natural <laughs> seems to work nicely with this fingering on the Leo whistle. Uh, and then high D, which we've already talked about, again, you can try that fingering or just the middle D fingering and increase the airspeed or just put a bit harder, basically. Uh, so there you have it. Those are the notes in the upper register of the whistle, and we've pretty much covered that. Um, you will occasionally see natural signs uh, next to the F in certain tunes, um, and again, depending on your key signature, um, your key signature will dictate whether or not you're going to play an F or an F sharp. Um, however, most of traditional music is written in D or G or the relative minors, um, E minor, uh, B minor, or you can even play in a A mode, which is a minor mode. Um, yeah, so um, with an F natural, if you're playing in the key of G, uh, which is an F sharp or a key of D, which also has an F sharp. So you may see a natural sign next to the F. And again, probably the easiest way to do it is half holding. So you can go. And again, it takes a bit of practice to get that. And in the lower register, Um, there is on some whistles, very few unfortunately, but on a few whistles you can get an F natural um, by playing that, but uh, it's always, on all whistles I've played, it's always pretty been pretty much been wildly sharp. Uh, so for F natural, probably the best way forward uh, is to uh, half hold it. Okay, so we've gone through the notes in the lower register on the first video, and we've uh, gone through the notes in the second register in this video. Um, and like you did on the first video, 
Get familiar with what the notes look like on the stave or on the ledger lines and also get familiar with how they relate to the notes and the fingerings on the whistle. So you may want to take your time and do this and uh, spend as much time as you need to familiarise yourself with the notes in the lower register and once you feel confident that you know those maybe then start introducing some of the higher register notes um, until you get familiar with all the notes and what they look like uh, and again uh, it's a good idea to go through a simple piece and a stress simple piece of music uh, and identify what the notes are uh, and then test yourself on the whistle so you could say have a look at a note which might be a G um, in the upper register and then find that on the whistle um, and Whichever note you want, you can have a look at that and then just see if you can memorise it. Now, it's a great idea to be able to commit to memory what the notes look like on the stave and how they relate to fingerings on the whistle. So if, uh, if I've got a passage, say, which is uh, low G, B, middle D, high G, which is basically an arpeggio, I'll memorise what those notes look like on the stave and I'll also memorise where they lie on the whistle. So it's a good idea to incorporate um, those techniques of remembering uh, where the notes are on the stave and how they relate to notes on the whistle. Um, and again, it's practice like anything else. You'll become familiar with it the more you do it. So if you practice this a lot, uh, you could learn all the notes probably in a, in a week or even two weeks, um, maybe even sooner. Um, but it's familiarising yourself with where the notes are on the stave and where they lie under your fingers on the whistle. So that's pretty much it. Um, what I'll do now is I'll give you a simple tune. Um, I'll put the music up, uh, have a look through it, and I'd like, if possible, for you to try and learn this tune just from the reading the notes alone. Um, don't worry about rhythm for now. Um, I'm going to do another video in part three where I'm going to talk about things uh, called time signatures and I'm also going to explain how we count rhythm because counting rhythm is really important in reading music because remember at the beginning I said that the note will tell you two important parts of information. First part is the pitch, how high or how low the note is. And the second bit is duration, how long or how short the note is, how we count rhythm. And that's a really important skill to be able to do, um, especially it will help you immensely in tune learning. And it's the bit really which tab can't give you. Uh, tab can't give you the rhythm and the rhythm, especially in Irish traditional music is all important because it's dance music and we have to learn how to count the rhythm um, to make the piece sound rhythmically accurate um, otherwise it would just be a series of random notes so rhythm and counting rhythm is critical to uh, reading music and as I said I'm going to do another uh, tutorial video on counting rhythm and explain about time signatures and how we do that and how the rhythm breaks down um, so for this video, we're really just going through the notes in the upper register of the whistle. Become familiar with them, learn to identify them on the stave and learn to identify where they lie on the whistle. And that'll be a big thing to do. Uh, it'll help you immensely in your journey in reading music. So I'm gonna put up uh, the notes for a simple tune which incorporates notes in both registers. Um, and see how you get on with it. Okay, I'll see you shortly for part three of uh, Introduction to Reading Music. You take care, folks. Bye for now. So, a tune that you can try um, reading the music for, reading the notes for, um, is a tune called Planks the Irwin, which was written by Carolan, uh, a famous uh, harper 
from many years ago. Um, it's a fairly simple tune, so we're going to keep it fairly simple and fairly steady. I'm not going to put any ornamentation in. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. And what I'd like you to be able to do is to follow the notes. Don't worry too much about the rhythm for now. Um, I'm going to explain about counting rhythm, about note values and things like time signatures in the next video. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to just play the melody. So here we go. Um, so you might notice before I start playing is we've got what's called repeat signs. Uh, we've got a repeat sign at the end of the second line. Uh, and basically this means you repeat back to the beginning of the piece. Um, you've got a repeat sign at the first, uh, at the beginning, and then you've got a repeat sign at the end of the second line. And same thing with line three and four. You get to the end of line three, and then you're going to repeat, uh, um, sorry, the end of line four, and then you're going to repeat back to the end of line three. So repeat signs are those two little dots with a thick and a thin line. So here we go. go to the next section. So there you have it, <clears throat> Planksty Irwin. Have a go at playing along with it, and trying to identify the notes and trying to find the notes on the whistle. Uh, it's an important thing to practice it fairly regularly. Um, getting the notes and recognizing the notes is an important skill, but it will help if you practice doing this fairly regularly. Just look at a piece of music and just try and identify the notes Again, make sure that the music isn't too complex because otherwise you may overload. So keep it fairly simple and again, try and identify where the notes are on the stave and what they look like on the whistle. So there you have it. Um, if you've got any questions or you need any further clarification, um, just email me, uh, happy to answer any questions or if you're finding you've got problems, my email is ben at benwalker.org or you can um, just leave a question here in comments. Um, and if you found this useful, uh, you may like to uh, give it a like and a subscribe. Uh, okay, so that's about it for today. Uh, so in these two videos, I've covered uh, note identification, what the notes look like on the stave, and where they are to be found on the whistle. Uh, the next tutorial I'm going to do is all about time signatures, and counting note values and rhythm. Okay, hopefully see you soon. You take care now. Bye-bye.